Take a look at this clip. Can you tell me what's wrong with it? How about this one? It's common knowledge that you need to defend an enemy castle with one of your own. Here's another example of building placements gone wrong. If you didn't know what was wrong in any of these clips, you'll be learning a lot from this one. Building placement is an often overlooked aspect of how to play the game. Build orders tell you which buildings to build, but don't tell you where to build them. This is mainly due to the fact that each map is different because of random map generation. One map might have two wood lines in the back and forward gold, and another might only have one wood line. In this video I'll be going over ways in which you can more intelligently construct buildings, no matter what map you get. Knowing how to read the map will help you with scouting as well, since you'll actually know what you're looking for past finding animals and the opponent. One of the things you should be thinking about from the start of the game is how you might wall your base. Things to consider are resource placements, how open your map is, what your strategy is, and what your opponent's strategy is. If you're relying on early forage economy to make scouts, then you need to be extra aware when you have forward berries and work towards protecting them. You can usually scout a drush before it comes in, so in the case that you can't afford to lose your berries, maybe take it easy on the deer pushing. To protect your berries in this case, make houses and palisade walls to contain your villagers so they can't be attacked. You do have to be careful of fully depleting forage bushes, as this is a way to introduce a hole into your wall fairly quickly. To prevent this, you can put villagers on bushes that have a lot of berries on them, and you can also shift queue a palisade wall behind the bush so that when the bush is finished, the villager will automatically build the wall. If you have forward main gold, you'll want to place your barracks and stable or archery range in front of it. Since these buildings have high HP and take up 3x3 tiles, they can really restrict enemy movement in that area. A lot of the time, your initial walls just have to keep you safe until Castle Age, where you can protect areas with TCs. Don't worry about making your initial walls too big. Maps that are very open favor aggressive play, as the resource investment required to wall can be better spent on military units a lot of the time. In these cases where your base is super open, you'll want to invest as little as possible into walls to not die while you get your own military out. This can mean relying on resource walls or just walling towards the town center which will prevent units from walking past since town center fire is deadly in the early game. If your strategy is to do damage early as with men at arms archers or tower rush, you'll want to delay walling until your rush is underway. If your strategy takes a more economic approach as with drush fast castle or scouts into knights, you'll want to wall up earlier. Adjusting your strategy based on your map can work as well. If you go into the game thinking you want to go men at arms archers, but your base is extremely easy to wall, you might decide to change your strat to Drush FC. Conversely, if you wanted to open scouts into knights, but your map is super open, you may need to go for an extended feudal age and build more scouts than you were initially intending and possibly even get upgrades for them. Adding archers with your scouts can also be good here. If your opponent is going Drush FC and his base is fully walled, then you might only add one scout when going scouts for a faster uptime to Castle Age. On the other hand, if he's open, maybe you can justify going full feudal and getting 10 plus scouts with upgrades. There are so many things you can take into account when knowing when and where to wall. You just have to know what you're looking for. Against Drush, you need earlier and smaller walls. Against Men at Arms, walls can come up a bit later, but they need to be further out to deal with an archer follow up. Versus scouts you want full walls as they can use their mobility to run past your town center without taking too much damage. And if the opponent is tower rushing, you'll want to wall to your TC in a way that he can't quickly move his villagers to the next good tower location. This is just the basic idea of how you'll want to wall against various strategies. Each game plays out differently, so even if you wall correctly, you're not guaranteed to win the game from there. In the early game, you'll want to build your houses in a way that might be used as part of a wall at some point. This can be part of your outer wall, or in a place which you can just wall to your town center to keep a drush out. Of course your first house or two that you build should be close to your starting villagers, as you need at least one of them right away. Another useful position is near your lumber camp or mill so that you can more easily make resource walls against drushermen at arms if you need to. 
Houses and villagers both take 25 seconds to build, so you want to get your early houses up just before you have one additional population space. This means your villager needs to start building it when the UI reads 13 out of 15. If it reads 14 out of 15, then you need to send multiple villagers to rush up the building so you don't get housed. In the mid-game, houses should be used to fortify existing walls, especially in places where you have long sections of palisade walls. One thing you have to remember is, never waste a house. If you're not building a house as part of a wall, then that means that you'll probably be spending more wood on palisade walls later on. When placing a resource drop-off building, you'll want to consider how efficient the villagers will be when dropping off resources, as well as how easy you can defend the villagers in case of an enemy attack. Generally, you should think of the most efficient location first, and then think if your villagers will be in trouble if you put a camp there. The most common time that you'll sacrifice a bit of efficiency for defendability is when placing a mill. Placing it one tile away from the berries will make it significantly easier to wall against melee units. Another example is not building a mining camp with two villagers in a hole. It might seem like a galaxy brain idea to have four ultra-efficient gold miners until one archer shows up and forces you to delete your mining camp to save your villagers. For wooden berries, you almost always want to utilize a hole for villagers when you see it, because by the time the enemy has archers or towers in your base, you'll usually have chopped out from the hole to make an escape route. It can be somewhat tricky to get your villagers in the hole at first, but with practice, it's not too bad. Using alt-click will make it so that your villagers won't get tasked to the resource, which can make it a bit easier. You have to be careful to not get too good at this though, as if you send three villagers into a hole, one of them will not be able to work. Versus melee units, the villagers in the hole are safe, but this leaves less villagers on the outside, which makes them more vulnerable. You can place a few palisade walls around these exposed villagers. Since additional builders after the first one only add a third worth of build speed, using just one villager to build the camp and the other villagers to gather resources is the most optimal way to send many villagers to a new resource. There are a few things to keep in mind though. If you didn't drop off the resources that the villagers were carrying before sending them to the new resource, you'll have to use all of the villagers to build the camp so they drop them off once the camp is complete. Also, since it takes 35 seconds to build a resource drop-off camp, and roughly 25 seconds to collect 10 wood, you may need to switch which villager is building the camp partway through the construction process so that the villager that was collecting the resource doesn't try to drop off at the town center. This method makes your drop-off cycles just a bit faster, which can help a lot when trying to afford early feudal age buildings or for getting just enough gold for the 3rd Militia and the Men-at-Arms upgrade. Military production buildings should usually be built in front of the base. This helps to fortify the front and with their 3x3 size helps to prevent feudal archers from shooting villagers over them. This is especially useful when you have a forward gold or berries. You also want buildings on the front so that you can get your army to your opponent's base faster. If you're opening scouts, for your first stable using two villagers to build it will not only make it build faster, it will also give you insurance against if the enemy scout tries to delay it by attacking your builder. With two, you can use the first one to fight the enemy scout while the other one builds. One disadvantage of building production on the front is if your opponent is sieging you and you can't fight it back right away. If your production buildings get destroyed, you may not ever be able to build up enough army to stop the siege. In this case, you should build replacement production buildings behind your TC so that you can continue to build up your forces. If you're trying to defend versus knights with a monastery at home, build it close to your town center so that you can garrison monks after they get a conversion. Monks take 51 seconds to produce, so you really want to conserve your numbers when you can. A nice trick that you can do with monks in this situation is get the monk to convert, then shift queue a garrison command to your TC. Once the monk finishes converting, he'll instantly jump in the TC. When building a forward siege workshop, getting it on a hill when you can is best. If you do this, your mangonels that come out will be able to do more damage right away as they'll get a hill bonus. Also, mangonels on a hill can tank a direct hit from enemy mangonels that are firing from the low ground, unless the delete trick is used. If you want to learn more about the delete trick, I've linked a T-West video down below. Another thing to keep in mind when placing a forward siege shop is that you should place it in a spot where the enemy has long walls made of buildings, not wood lines. The longer the wall, the more places the opponent will have to wall behind to buy time. Since siege units are slow, repositioning them from a poorly placed siege workshop can take too much time. It also leaves reinforcing siege vulnerable. Something else that can leave you vulnerable is unnecessary gates. Building a gate at the back of your base that you won't be using until much later creates a very weak point in your walls. 
Palisade Gates have only 2 Pierce Armor compared to the 5 Pierce Armor of Palisade Walls. Since the size of the gate is 4 tiles long, more melee units can hit it at once as well. This means that Palisade Gates are vulnerable to all units. You can mitigate the vulnerability against melee units if you place them behind a layer of walls like this though. Even a gate on the front can be unnecessary sometimes, as just deleting a palisade wall and then rebuilding it when your units leave can work just as well. Gates are also relatively expensive and take longer than walls to build, so you have to be confident that your opponent won't be able to exploit the weak point in your wall. Sometimes you can justify spending stone on a stone gate, but it does make your walls look kinda weird. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what a good town center location looks like. Usually you'll be adding two town centers fairly quickly after reaching castle age. One of these new town centers should be on wood most of the time. At this point in the game, you still need lots of wood to make farms, and your lumber camps that you built earlier will be starting to get inefficient. The other town center location depends a lot on the map and your strategy. For example, if your strategy is to go for a lot of gold units, you might want your third town center on gold. If your game plan revolves around getting your unique unit out, maybe the third town center goes on stone instead. You usually want to have your starting town center in the middle of your base, with the two additional ones protecting the sides or front of your base. If you suspect your opponent will go forward siege, making a forward town center can be a bad idea. When placing a town center on wood, you always want it touching it. If it's on gold or stone, only have it touching it if the resource is below the town center. This is because villagers can only stand under the town center on the bottom part. On these kind of mines, you just want the TC one tile away. Another thing to consider is how much farmland you'll have around the town center. Make sure to build it three tiles away from the edge of the map and other buildings if you can. This kind of applies to placing other buildings as well. Try not to build them within three tiles of your town center or mill as you'll need that space for farms later. As a quick aside, when placing farms around your town center or mill, you can shift Q to place multiple farms quickly, but you should right click a central farm so that the villagers will all go to separate farms after they finish building the initial farm. If you don't do this last step, all of the villagers will build each farm together in the order that you shift queued the farms, which is significantly slower. If you can spare the time, individually sending each villager to different farms is even better. A similar idea can be said for when you're placing a new mill. Place the mill, then shift queue as many farms as you need, then right click the mill. If you have extra time, you can individually send all villagers to their own farm, or even just one to build the mill and the rest on one farm. This is slightly better because farms take less time to build than mills, so villagers are being inefficient for less time. One final tip for where to place your town centers is avoid placing it on a resource that already has villagers working on it. This means don't place it on a forest that already has a lumber camp, or on a gold mine that already has a mining camp. Since you already have villagers there, newly created villagers will oversaturate it very quickly. Everything I've said in this section are just things to consider. They're not absolute truths in every situation. Sometimes your map is just so bad that you need to make TCs in suboptimal positions. There's one more building where the location that you place it is the most important part of your game plan sometimes. Castles are an expensive but extremely effective way to control part of the map. If you have a castle down, then your opponent will not want to get anywhere near it a lot of the time, as it can one-shot lower HP units such as crossbowmen. The only unit that's really effective against castles in the castle age is the battering ram, and that unit gets easily countered by mangonels or any melee unit including villagers. Basically, what this means is that if you have a castle, that area is yours until the opponent has access to imperial age siege, cavalry, or infantry. Where you place your first castle depends a lot on your game plan and how the game is going. You can use this castle to defend forward golds, or build it in a central hill to use as a point in which you can launch your attack from. You can also place it right in front of your opponent's base, which can let you destroy everything quickly with trebuchets. Of course, you have to be going imp behind this forward castle. If your opponent gets imp first, he'll treb your castle down and you'll probably lose the game from there. Usually you'll want your castle on a hill, as the bonus damage and damage reduction you get from building on a hill is massive in this game. It doesn't matter how high up on the hill your castle is, just that it's higher than its target. If there isn't a good hill for you to place the castle on, you should try to place it in a way the opponent can't attack it from atop a hill. At least then you're both on the low ground. In a treb war, getting masonry, architecture, and hoardings, along with repairing, can be the key to winning it. Usually you'll want to target the opponent's castle with your trebs, unless you have extra accuracy from the Huns bonus or the Warwolf tech. If your opponent gets a castle on a hill outside of your base, build a castle in a spot which the enemy trebuchet has to move out of the protected area of his castle. 
If you build your own castle in a position that he can just treb you from the high ground, you're going to have a bad time. In the late game, castles should be built near neutral gold and stone mines, or in your farming economy. As you approach your population limit, it can be difficult to allocate army to defend certain areas. The number one rule is to place your castles in places that help you control an area on the map, be it protecting your farmers from raids, or cutting off attack paths that the enemy might want to take on the map, or any of the other examples we've already gone over. Alright, hopefully you've gained some insights into how you should place your buildings. With that said, I hope to see you on the ladder soon.